Hey guys, it's Kaler. In today's video, we're gonna create an awesome button hover effect that's magnetic. It sticks to the mouse and follows it around. And then when you release, it bounces back to its original position. It's also got a splash of color on that hover animation. It's only gonna take us a few minutes to set this up in Webflow. So before we dive in, make sure you hit that subscribe button for new videos like this every single week. And with that said, let's get started. And of course, I need to give credit to Dennis Snellberg for creating this interaction. We're gonna be recreating his button hover in today's Webflow tutorial. So make sure you check out his portfolio site. It's linked down in the description below. All right, so to get started here in Webflow, I'm just gonna scroll down where I have this same grid set up, but I don't have a button here. So I'm just gonna be placing that in the bottom right corner of this layout. So just hit Command E and then just type out div block. And I'm gonna give it a class of new button since I already have a button. If you're in a new project, you could just call it button if you'd like. So the first thing I'll do on this is I'm gonna go up to display and set that to flex, vertical, and align that center and justify that center. That way when we create our button text, it'll be centered inside of our button. You can set your button to any height and width you want. I'm setting mine to 200 pixels by 200. And then I'm also gonna set the position to relative since we'll have something absolute inside this later. And then give it a nice fill color. I'm going with a black. Finally, setting the radius to 100% will make it a nice rounded circle. Next, I'm gonna hit Command E and create a text block. Then when we have that selected, I'm gonna go up to the fill color on this and we'll just set this to a nice white color. And then the text is a little small by default, so I'm gonna bump that up to 18 pixels just so we can read it, center line it, and then I'll call this something like get started. And this is a button, so I'm gonna select the new button class, right click, and then go to convert to link block. So our mouse cursor will change when we hover on that. Since we did that, I'm gonna go down to the decoration and remove that. Same thing on the hover, just to make sure that when we hover over this button, our text doesn't get that nasty underline. We don't want that. So then I'm going to select this class now and create a new div. So it's inside of our button and I'm gonna call this hover color. And so this is gonna be the splash of color when we hover over our button. I'm gonna to go to position and set this to absolute select full, so that sets that to 0% all around. And on the top value, we are gonna change that later, but for now, I set it to this so we can see it to style it. On the Z index, we'll give it a Z index of one, and then let's give this a nice blue colored fill. And then to make this a circle, we'll set that radius to 100% as well. And then now you'll see our text is hidden underneath this. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that text in the layers panel. And then we'll go ahead and on the position, we'll set that to relative so we can grab that Z index and set it to five so it appears in front of that color. Then if we select hover color once more, now we can set the top value to auto since we've already styled it. And by setting that top value to auto, you'll see that that places that at the bottom of the button. And so that will allow me to set the height to 0%. And so now when we hover on, we're gonna change the height value to 100% and it will grow from the bottom to the top. And then when we hover off, it'll go back down to 0%. And so with that, that's all the setup we need for this button. So now we can start adding our interactions to make this look really cool. And then we can select our new button class, go up to the top right for the interaction panel, and I'm gonna add a element trigger of mouse hover. And then we're gonna create a new animation for the hover on, which I'll call button hover on. So I'm gonna go into the layers panel. I'm gonna grab the hover color class. And then under actions, I'm gonna hit the plus icon and I'll set that to a size action. So we're gonna set the initial state. So where we want the animation to start from. So I'll check the set initial state box. And then by default, I want this to be at 0%. And then we can just right click and duplicate that. And then I'm gonna set this to 100%. So where we want the animation to end. And then I want this to be a little faster, so I'm gonna change the duration to 0.3 seconds. And then to make this nice and smooth, we'll add some easing. So I'm gonna go in and out court. And then we can take a look at that by hitting the play, and you can just see it scales from the bottom to the top. So we can save that, and now we need to set a on hover out animation. So I'm just gonna create a new one. So we'll click plus, and then I'm gonna call this button hover out. And then on this one, we don't need to set an initial state. So I'll just grab the hover color class, add a size action, and we'll copy those same settings down, 0.3 for the duration, 
in and out court for the easing, and then we'll set it down to 0% for the height value, changing it back to its starting state. So then you can save that, and then we'll go ahead and look at the live preview. So you can see what we have here. We need to change the overflow on this button. So I'll grab the new button class, go to my style panel, and then we'll go down to the overflow and set that to hidden. That way we can't see the edges of that blue circle. So now when we hover over it, it looks nice and clean. And we have this awesome splash of color when we hover on and off this button. So now that we have that, we need to create that magnetic effect when we hover over it. So we'll go to the interactions panel once more, elemental trigger, and I'm gonna grab the mouse move over element. So while our mouse is moving over it, we're gonna create a new animation. And I'll just give this one a random name. And so this has a mouse X actions and a mouse Y actions. So we're gonna add a mouse X first and with new button selected, we're gonna add a move. So we have a 0% and 100% state. So under mouse X at 0%, I'm gonna set this to a value of negative 70 pixels. And then when it's at 100%, I'm gonna set that to a value of 70 pixels. So that's gonna make that snap to my mouse. So if I turn the live preview on, you can see it kind of pulls towards my mouse when I hover over on that side. So that's what we're looking for. So I'll turn that off. And now on the Y, we're gonna add another move. So we have the same thing, 0% and 100%. So at mouse Y, 0%, we'll set that to negative 70. And then at 100%, we'll set that to 70. And so now it's gonna to pull towards my mouse no matter what direction I'm hovering on this button with, which is exactly what we're looking for. Now we need to add that text pull so that the text pulls with the button as well. So I'll go to the layers panel. I'm just gonna grab that text block and then we'll hit plus under X and set it to move. And then this time we need to right click and duplicate and then drag one down manually since it doesn't create the starting and ending states for us. So at 0% on the text block, on the X axis, we'll set that to something like negative 25, so a much smaller number. And then on the 100%, I'll set it to a positive 25 pixels. And then we need to apply this to our Y as well. So again, right click and duplicate, drag that down to 100%. So at 0% on the Y, we need to set the Y value to a negative 25 pixels. And then at 100%, we'll set it to a positive 25 pixels. So with live preview on, you can see our text now moves a little bit more and it's creating a nice little effect. So with that little stuttering, all you have to do is update the smoothing slider in Webflow. It's kind of a little bug. So if you're getting that stuttering effect, just go to the smoothing and change that a little bit. So now you can see this nice pull effect and it looks nice and smooth. So now I want to create that bounce effect. So if I scroll up real quick, you can see when I release that kind of bounces back in place. To do that, it's real simple. We just need to go back into our mouse hover. So our first interaction we set up and then in the button hover out that we created, we need to select our new button class. And I'm just gonna drag this to 0% so we want it to happen immediately. And I'll set the move to X and Y since when we hover off, we want it to snap back to its original position. Then under easing, I want to go to ease out and set that to out bounce, which is the key to that. And you can set the duration to whatever you want. I'm going to leave it at default. And then we just need to grab that text block and do the same thing. So we'll add a move. We need to move it up to 0%. So it happens immediately with no delay. We'll add that bouncing on the out. And then I'm going to set the X and Y values to zero. So it snaps back to its original position. And then we can hit save. So that's all you need to do to add that nice bounce effect. And then I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck the tablet phone landscape and phone portrait on both of our interactions, just so we don't have those. And then I'll update the smoothing just to make sure that we're not having that jittering bug. And with that, we have created our awesome magnetic button which you can add to any of your Webflow projects. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, make sure you give it a like. Check out Dennis, his link is down in the description. Don't forget to subscribe, I upload every single week. Also check out these design related videos for more content from me. And as always, have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next one.